create a new project. Mm -hmm. So the project name is internal URL and description. Um, also internal be used in metadata if you don't overriding meta scale. Uh, and the project name is whatever the heck you want, pretty much. It's usually like what what is your homepage title. Um, okay. Zombie dash pops. Perfect. There's a big action towards the right hand side upload project image um, on the right. Here. So it'll, yeah, okay. Looks like it's decided to spread 300. Okay. It still looks cool. That. That's project okay. Here. The project URL, it'll it'll show up as a attribute in the token. Again, unless you're, unless we're totally overriding things. So the project URL, is that just like um, where it's going to go? Uh, yeah, it should be the of your pro of your project being the zombie pops. Can you say it again? You were breaking up. I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, the, the NFT makers project URL field and use it as an attribute in the tokens meta by default. Okay. So should I put like my website here or something else? You want to put your you want to put the website that you want people to be directed to. If they're checking out your token on Pool PM, okay, and the data, then if you, the URL you put there is going to show up. So a lot of people just put their Twitter if they don't have like a really cool, flashy site to drive. Okay. I don't know how it's going to work out in Twitter spaces currently on board with uh, Wadipop, but <clears throat> hey. um, the description got to be short. In concise, it's hard, like writing a haiku. And future proof. Imagine somebody stumbles on this token a year from now and, and has never met you. This description and the URL and the name, they could, um, in the context of something. Uh, okay. What's up, Rocco? Yeah, just one on one. And it's a bigger lesson. I think that'll simple. You can like ask questions and stuff like while we're waiting for the uh, hang out in space and shit. So this where it says token name prefix, um, you may or may not want to use it. I normally don't. Any NFT that you add to the project that you're making now will have this prefix in addition to whatever you say the token is. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. What would someone typically put there? Um, if you wanted to use the prefix field, an example of this would be just zombie. So that when you're making the NFTs, an NFT name can be like op one, op two, and the ultimate result of the token name is zombie pop one, zombie pop. Oh. Yeah. But you okay. can also leave like 
sometimes if you make a really long prefix, might end up up by forgetting that you made a prefix and then overextending on the maximum character length of the token. Okay, so I think I'll leave that blank. <laughs> yeah. Um, everything else can be the same for now, except I want to double check with you. These are one of ones? Yes. All right, so that means max token supply stays at what it essentially means is any NFT, any subsequent NFT that you're adding to this project, going to have a presumed maximum supply of non fund If you have, if you have a, a max supply of two or a thousand or anything other than one, then they're fungibles that you're making. In okay. Uh, okay. Otherwise, looks good. This payout wallet we're going to change later. Okay. And what is this 20 minutes? I mean? still don't really understand how NFT Maker actually uses this, but it's the amount of time that you want um, NFT code to reserve an NFT for. I believe that's in tandem with their uh, vending machine script that I'm going to show you. They give you a script, a button that forms a pop up. With this little smart little checkout process. And I believe that this reservation time is the amount of time that you want to take a random NFT out of availability while somebody's working out there. Okay. However, I believe NFT Maker at this time warns both business customers and their pay payees that. Um, they're just overriding this value to an hour for now because of the work and issues. Okay. Uh, okay, good for now. Yeah, well, it is set. So I guess it, this would be a good time to tell you. Team Maker recommends against this and says that it'll make your drops. But I have to direct you to a separate menu to add wallet account. So just hit next for now. Okay. <clears throat> policy. Uh, there's two radio buttons, new policy and existing policy. If you have an existing policy like file, you'd, you'd, you'd click the sync policy button and deep be dealing with the whole new interface. But uh, right now, even, even though it's kind of bleeding that it's gray in the policy script will lock by default is on and it says it's going to lock a couple more. Um, this is something I didn't know. First, I thought that the policy script locking meant um, you're, you're just not allowed to change anything else after that. But what it really means <laughs> you also can't sell anymore at that point. So you better mint them all um, if you if you don't want you know them to be locked and not sold out by that time. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes. So if it if I have it like lock at this time and they're not all minted by this time, that means that that it's just over. Yeah, and somebody correct me, but I've I've done several drops and effed myself in this way. I'm ninety eight percent certain when the policy script. You can't mint no more. Even if you planned on having like a thousand uniques or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so change that. And uh, what are we in March? Hmm. Maybe I'll just go with a year. Yeah, sure. Another option, like I don't, I, I'm, I haven't had a full-fledged conversation with people about this, um, about whether it's important to have the policy lock as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but like one way around that would be again, to like mint some of the tokens yourself and then list them on a secondary. Oh. Okay. Um, one question. 
Like if yeah. if I have an existing policy ID like that, like Mermaida made or like someone else made, can I use it here to mint other pieces in that same collection? Yeah, click the existing policy radio button to see what that looks. Okay, so policy. So I would policy put ID the has to match what you in for the signing key, verification key, and policy, and they should all have been handed to you in a zip file. Oh, so the signing key is something I would have to get from her. Yes. Okay. I have no idea what that, what any of those well, three things are. Could, uh, <laughs> fuck. Yes, I'm pretty sure you could look that up yourself. Okay. You would, uh, uh, verification. Oh, and the policy. If they made it for you. Um, and I know that, that they can do that. Those people specifically, I mean. Okay. Um. It's the policy ID you can look up on pool PM um, and all of those things have to match. And then you and then the interface would allow you to continue um, and and support it. Okay, so I would be able to find all of that information then on pool.pm. Uh, the policy ID. Okay. But you'd have to get the verification key and the policy script from your mentor. Okay, there we go. Sorry. No worries. Um, okay, new policy though. Policy, um, March 10th, 2020. Hello? Click next, go ahead. Okay. Oh. Um. All right. I don't have to do anything at this screen. I don't do, do anything? Yeah. But, but what you're looking at is um, a standard metadata format for a 721 at the very top. This is nested JSON, so it's a way to... Um, uh, let's see. Unstructured in a structure. And this is this is what a token looks like essentially. Now these brackets is display name, IPFS link. These brackets are actually dynamic placeholder. You can see it, you see this little explanation. You're breaking up again. I can only hear placeholder. Okay. So th these these names and brackets are placeholder, and if you were to be like overriding your metadata and making it super fancy and custom, just know that you can use these placeholders in in place of the actual value that the should be in the metadata. Okay. We'll inject it. Okay, I see what you're saying. That's why under asset name you don't you don't see zombie pop. And display name description would be what you just put in the project description. Mm. But it's just description in these brackets and means NFT maker knows like place that with the actual description. Okay. Uh, yes. But um, this is a basic token, and it's perfectly fine as it is. Description and if your, your website's name is going to be in there. Where? Anyway, click next, and we can start adding NFTs and data tokens. Okay. The last page it just spits out everything that you just did right before you click save project um, this payout to internal wallet will be changed uh, the max supply cannot be changed nor can the policy um expiration date okay um okay so everything on here is what it's going to look like at this point, um, yes, 
you can change everything you need to change about the NFT metadata because we, we haven't even uploaded any yet. What you're looking at is a default configuration for the project. And if you do nothing with the NFT metadata, it'll use that. Okay. Do I save? Save. All right. Uh, Okie dokie. On the right hand side, there's a bazillion tiny ass icons. Yes. The first one is a pencil icon. Yeah. That is how you, you're going to go back in, and change anything about basic project settings. Okay. Uh, go on the left hand side, bottom, click wallet. Things. Enter. So you're gonna, yeah, you have to like, um, that you want to be made available to you as a list of addresses to get. Can you repeat that? Uh, yeah, these are, these are the, this is a list of wallets that you want to use in the campaigns. Okay. So would I just need one address for now, like yeah. for, yeah. or do, do I need more than one? Make it a, make, make it a, like CC. Vault. Okay. So that's what I did here. I copied that from CC vault. Um, paste. Now, under comment, that's just the label you use to remind yourself what, what wallet it is. This is my label. Okay. Hero pool. Account. Yes. Okay. All right. When you hit submit, it's going to tell you you need to confirm that choice in your email. Okay. Hmm. Well, an address not valid. That's weird. Did you paste it twice in a row or something? Maybe. Oh, it's it. the first letter is uppercase. I don't think it should. Oh, be. because I copied and pasted it from CC Vault to Google Doc. Here, try again. Okay, it'll, it'll say, please check your email to confirm you want to do that. Okay. And then since we're still on screen share, do not show me your email. Oh, I ha I'm doing it on my phone. Okay. <laughs> I'm meant to record these things. This is the second class I've given. I haven't recorded. Are you recording it? Um, no, I was, but then I realized it, that recording software was rid of that crazy echo. Oh, I see. Yeah, when I was being all mansplaining to you. <laughs> Okie dokie, so that wallet is confirmed. Go back to NFT project on the left. All okay. right. And edit button on the right. Um, now under payout wallet, you have a new choice. Oh, okay. Select that wallet. Yep. Now directly of the pencil icon is a and yeah, that's for manage NFT. <clears throat> okay. You said there's only you're only doing ten. Oh, uh, there's actually twelve. Oh, okay. And what's the metadata? 
Um, I really just have the name of each one. I was just yeah, I was just going to add the name of each one, really, other okay. than what we already have. Maybe in the next lesson, uh, for somebody else, I'll teach you. Uh, uh, click the first name button. Look in there. The token name. Okay, token token name. Uh, no spaces, no special. So this is the the ticker. Yeah, the zombie. And um, your prefix would be combined with that. You didn't have, you didn't add a prefix. Oh, okay, I see. Um, zombie. Oh, this one I can have. I can I do a a hyphen there? Oh, okay. Uh, the display name field is the title. That'll show up in pool PM as the as the title, the header. Is that the one that's already there? Uh, no, you you'll want to make new display for NFT you're uploading. Okay. Nope. Okay, zombie. Up and this is green. Roger. Okay. And then mm, you could leave it blank, but I'd recommend just paste anything from the project description. That uh, way, there's no presumptions about what it's going to be, what value it is. Can you repeat that again? Yeah. Um, whatever, like overarching slogan you have for the project is normally what I put in for the description. Okay. So. And then keep it in no. Keep it in what? Notepad. So Notepad. Just so you can have like copy and paste it into your clipboard. Oh. Just so it's around to paste into your NFT. Okay. Um, description. Don't let the description stop you. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> Let's say pop art zombie lollipop. <laughs> Okay, perfect. <laughs> about a note about those two um, price from API slash price list. Mm -hmm. which you probably always want static price. You select here and now what that price of that NFT is going to be, but that but that means it's disqualified from random uh, from the random drop. So just so you know, so it stays where it is. But just so you know, that's okay. So the price from the API slash price. Slash price list. And you're going to use the price list. Okay. And then can you explain what the static price is again? Uh, click it. So that's where you select for this NFT you're making here and now. However, if you do this, then um, this NFT can are going to be selected by the vending machine. When you're doing your like random drop. Okay. So if there were a hundred ADA each, then they, they should probably just go to a random drop, right? And price. Them. If these were all one of ones, like totally, totally pieces, then static price might make sense. Okay. All right, I see. So we go here. Perfect. I'll ask you to upload a picture. Um, I don't think you can. No. Stay. I mean, you, you you can. It's kind of stupid. You have to once you're at this point of uploading mm -hmm. the initial image, you have to like 
then cancel and then retype the description in the name. That's okay. I'll right. just be more specific with the other greens. Okay. Okay. So, uh, are there any sub files, multiple files in one token? No. So, if there, like, so if I did have though, like, sub files, would I be able to add like a different file type? Yes. Sorry, I'm just you curious. Mix up. So the first image has to be a because NFT Maker assumes that this first preview image is um, the image that needs to be used as a thumbnail. Cool PM is going to use that as the thumbnail. Okay. Now, if you use any other file, it's going to use the first subfile as the actual picture. Okay. However, if you use nothing but the preview image, that will be the NFT. Okay. And the preview image, if it'll be at whatever the quality is of the, um, like... Uh, original quality. The original quality? Okay. Is there a limit on that size? I think it's 25 megabytes. There 25 is a limit, megabytes. but I don't know what it is. Okay. Your gnarly hand needs more megabytes. <laughs> Not this one, but most of my files are there. Are eight thousand by eight thousand pixels at three hundred DPI. So I just wasn't sure. Like I know, like when I use token, sometimes like the like the thumbnail Ooh. doesn't work. So I have to like screenshot and then do an IPFS. Nice. Um. So if I wanna, cause I'm. So if I wanted to add another file, I could add like an MP4 after the preview image. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mix and match. Great. So I press next now. Press next. Cool. Uh. Okay. So this is where you would customize your metadata if you felt like getting fancy. Okay. That seven two that seven two one blurby blurb mm -hmm. that is the token JSON. Um, if you wanted to add or make changes, you would paste that here and edit it. And, but because it's blank, mm -hmm. you're going to get an NFT maker's default schema, which is the name, the website, and the description. Okay. <clears throat> it looks good. Most 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 projects do this. Okay, that sounds good. Just keep it simple. <laughs> Save. Save. Um, an error has occurred. What kind of error occurred? This application may lo no longer respond until oh, reloaded. You yeah, so NFT Maker's interface is like highly responsive, and if you're not clicking around for long periods of time, it'll like crap out. Oh, okay. Just hit F below the screen. So you know. Okay. That's... Okay. Well, I guess I can go back and do that. Yeah. Not too many steps. But. Uh um i'm gonna go vg all right grand and then save oh it did it twice oh oh right, no problem i can trash this this one right Now, do I have to do anything with um, Pinata, or does it do it itself? It's already pinned the image. Really? Uh -huh. Oh, yay. Okay. So, in this, this screen, NFT screen that you were at, um, it used to be blocked. You clicked upload. 
Okay, so do another one. The NFT you just made with a couple of buttons on the right side. Oh, yes. The fourth one in is the check metadata button. Click it. <clears throat> a little pop up says, Oh, yeah. Metadata looks good. Something you always want to click before, like, making the shit public. Mm -hmm. And I I typically try to do a full-fledged purchase because you just never know. The one tricky situation that might not be caught is um, an uncaught maximum size issue with one of the attributes. So you just want to just purchase it yourself um, right before you're ready to, you know, go big with it. Okay. Um, that's the process for one NFT, and you just repeat it for the other. The third uh, icon in the flying airplane. Yeah. That's meant to send. You can send it to anybody you want to if, if you desire. Oh, really? That's cool. It's a little bit pricey to mint and send a one off, but it's really cool. Now, there's a. Um, on the very, very top left, you have some account information. Balance of your internal wallet, which should be zero. Yes. So to do certain things like mint and send directly willy-nilly, mm -hmm. you need to put some money in that wallet. So on the top right-hand side is, is a profile icon. If you click that, um, hey, what's up, Izzy? Click that, um, you'll get some drop-down menus, and you want to click... Um, Fill up internal wallet. Okay. Hey, Kezi. That's kind of like um, like on token. How's it going? No, um, this is um, it's good. I'm I'm just with Lollipop on Discord. Yeah. Um, You're lagging. Uh, I don't know if that's just me. <laughs> I'm on Discord with uh, I'm trying to get to this. Click on the profile on the top right. Hmm. That does not technically belong to you, right? It belongs to NFT Maker. Oh, okay. It's money, it's money that you put in in order to drain it to take certain actions that cost money, such as that, that you didn't send the one off to the address of your. Okay. So you have to send money there in order to send. Do like do certain transactions within NFT maker maker. Like a like a direct mint. Okay. But again, to be clear, the fees that they are you they take their fees at the, at sale time. Unless you're directly minting and sending some random asset. Okay. That makes sense. Any questions? No, I think I, I got I it. Know, I just those wallets, those like middle old wallets, yeah. and sometimes faster than other wallets. So like pick stuff up on drop sometimes, and not just keep them in there, but just to get a faster transfer. That's interesting. Yeah, I've had I've had shit luck with internal wallet, um, but CC wallet, that's usually drops Uh, anyway, um, go back to projects menu on the left side okay technically your project's not activated um big ass group of buttons on the right there's a dollar sign yes click that um those are, that's the additional payout wallet function oh this that's one pretty cool too where you can split payment between multiple wallets among the list of approved wallets that you've made. Oh, wow. First sign is you can guarantee your artist partner, for example, working with that you're going to get a certain split. Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, manage NFT prices, yeah. Okay. This green button, create new price, is for you to make a um, 
the first I couldn't hear anything you said. Click the uh, first green button. New price. No, sorry. Create new price. Yeah. Account tokens. So you're making a simple table of prices to quantity or quantity to rather. Okay. So if I am just doing like one then and one would be 10 ADA. Perfect. Um, there's a slide on the left. Click price activated. Yep. And then save. Okay. Yeah, you, you can make that price valid between certain dates. And you can also add multiple prices to that price table. So two for 15 or something like that. Oh, okay. I see. Now this integration, um, you've got like a couple of different drop down menus for the style of the button that the system is going to give you. Okay. Can you see the style what anywhere? The, yeah, this is the preview. We're looking at the preview. Click style two. Oh, got it. And then under payment color, change it from green to black. <clears throat> so yeah, it's just a visual preview. I see. And then scroll down. Okay. Copy code to the board. All right. Wherever you slap on your website is where a button that looks similar to that mockup is going to appear. Okay. So. Your website's built on Adobe. It's like it's Adobe portfolio, so I don't know if it's gonna work. Like it doesn't have a lot of um, very limited in what it lets me do. I see. No worries. You could at least post the payment address on your social, right? Okay. Um, okay. So if if you're unable, if you don't have your own website to do like paste. HTML mm -hmm. and just scroll back up. Um, under the integration heading, there's an easy to miss app called In Address. Mm -hmm. Left a little bit more. Oh, pay in address? Is it this? Pay in address. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, click that slide, pay in address activated. Now copy that gibberish to the to the clipboard that is your pay to address. Anybody sends 10 ADA to that address, she comes out. Okay. But this is particularly useful for social. Um, if you don't have your own website, people just copy, paste, and pay into it. All right. <clears throat> so then I would just paste this into like Discord or something like that, and then they would send money to that, and then that would go to here or to whatever address, or to the address that yeah. I added. But yes, since you mentioned Discord, I'd have to also like mention that like it's it can be dangerous to do drops that way. Somebody might um, come in when you're not paying attention, uh, pretend to be you, drop a different address. Yeah, the topic, um, Legends Lost. That way. 
you have your own website at least you have and you tell everybody that's where it's going to be at least mm -hmm. you have control over that okay so i could just one thing i can do is i can create a button on my website and then embed the link there does that work yeah okay sure you could even just have the the static address on your website oh yeah Just in big ass letters, make them copy and paste it. I don't know that Adobe tool, but it can't, you know, it has to be a, at least to let you type. So, yeah, yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, okay, that wasn't too bad. Like, why is the video, the YouTube video that I was watching the other day, was just very confusing? <laughs> like, to jerk some off, I guess. Yeah. Look, NFT projects again. On the, on the menu on the left here. Oh, what else have I not shown you? You click the little shield icon under actions. That is your policy ID. Okay. That's also where you export your policy keys. If you want to use a different tool in the future, you 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 use you export that. Okay. See, I'm going to have to get you to do this with me all over again. <laughs> No worries. <laughs> it's a lot to remember. Oh, what else? Check policy ID on Cardano scan. Every time I look at Cardano scan, I get confused. Yeah, me too. One okay. more thing. Click the fork in the road. That's your sale feature. There's a click add sale condition. And the, click the first drop down to read what the option for condition. Yeah. Buyer must have one or more NFT with a specific policy ID. That's what you use to create a scenario where it must have season one token before he's allowed to purchase season two token. Oh, okay. Buyer must not have a specific policy ID. I must have less than 50. So those two options are good for rate limiting. And you can stack these conditions. Um, if, if you're concerned about bots, um, you're at least forcing somebody to create a more complicated because it, if you're not allowed to buy more than five, it means you have to buy five and then move it into a different wallet. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, the buyer must have a minimum of X and a specific policy ID. That's good for treasure hunting situations. Treasure so, hunting? Yeah, because you may want to release um like fungible tokens or some prior series tokens and say that you have in order and combine and in combination or if you or with a minimum a minimum number of these then allowed to buy into this new campaign so if you're making a campaign that looks like a trophy for example people who earn or buy Number of XYZ NFT to get this. And whitelisted addresses is whitelisted addresses. Okay, so that's just basically like they, they like get access to it first. Yeah, I'm a little how how you actually obtain a snapshot, ask abstract potato about that, but I have wallet addresses. Um, you can do it manually if you don't have that many tokens. Yeah. So use that to make sure that only very specific wallets are allowed to buy this drop. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, most of my things that I release are very like very, very small amounts. So. Um, okay. Oh, so, yep, that's that. Even though you're not using it, you'll probably think of some use for it later. Yeah. Manage API keys is you could create 
it, it opens up your system to permission. You usually want to keep that closed unless you're coding your own solution. Okay, so then I'm not going to need that. Transaction menu, you'll, you'll probably be refreshing that constantly. Okay, so that's just where things pop up if someone like buys something. Yeah, yes. And there's also an analytics similar. It's similar to what? There's also a similar project. If you click NFT projects, similar icon in the actions column. Oh, yeah. There? Yeah. Oh. Yep, even a cute little pie chart. <laughs> nice. What am I missing, Kizzy? Fucking nailed it. <laughs>